Last week we explored the Lenten practice of saying no. It's easier to say no to something when you've already said yes to something else. As those who follow Jesus, each of us constantly gets to choose no or yes. Will I do this or will I do that? How will I use the time and resources I have been given? That's a stewardship question. A stewardship and discipleship question, actually. As people of faith, we believe that all we have, from mismatched socks to our very lives, comes from God. God shares generously and gives to us because God loves us. And not just us, but everyone. Every being on the planet and beyond. Okay, maybe even the planet. That's how expansive God's love is. It's up to each of us then to decide how we're going to use whatever God has given us. Not a bad deal, right? However, hmm, God knows us pretty well. So God's given us some guidelines, assistance, and yes, even some rules to help us make good decisions about how we're going to use all this that God gave us. It's not that God doesn't trust us, but let's say hmm, our track record for using what God has given us hasn't been exactly stellar. There's an example of this in the Bible reading we heard today. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to that land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. Not a bad deal for Abram. Go where God takes you, and you'll get it all. You will become a great nation, blessed by God. Money? Yep. Power? Yep. Possessions? Yep. Descendants? Mm -hmm. He gets it all. There's just one little caveat, so that you will be a blessing. It's not so much a hitch or a condition, but God gives Abram a guideline as to how to use all this blessing that God is going to give Abram. Use it to bless others. As spiritual descendants of Abram, whose name God later changes to Abraham, we too have been blessed in order to be a blessing to others. Which brings us to this week's Lenten practice, the practice of blessing. And because we're also talking stewardship and discipleship, the practice of using what we have been given to be a blessing to someone else. Blessed to be a blessing. Now, blessing is one of those words that often gets used but doesn't often get defined. So let's check with Google. Blessing, a beneficial thing for which some one person is grateful, a person's sanction or support. <laughs> no surprises there, I hope. Being blessed is a good thing. A blessing can be both physical, like a handshake or uh, trading something, and non-physical, like just thinking about someone in a good way. I'm going to give you a moment now to bring to mind some time when someone blessed you, either physically or in some other way. How did it feel to be blessed? What did being blessed make you want to do in return? Maybe you want to turn and share that with your neighbor. When you were blessed, what did you want to do in return? Now let's flip it around. I'm going to give you another moment to recall a time when you were a blessing to someone else. Maybe you gave them something. Maybe you did something for them. Maybe you said something, something for which they were grateful, 
even if they didn't come out and say it. When were you a blessing for someone else? Well, you know what my question is next. How did that feel to be a blessing to someone? What did being a blessing make you want to do? Now, if we can just come back from our chatter, being a part of this congregation gives you many opportunities to be a blessing to others. We're often saying, I really like what, what you did with, with whatever. I really like the loaf of bread you sent to me. That, you know, you, your words just meant a whole lot. We can be a blessing to one another in this congregation. We can also be a blessing to people we may never meet through the mission and service of the United Church. When you give to mission and service, you are a blessing to thousands, maybe millions of people across Canada, a blessing that in some cases actually saves lives. To 63 community ministries serving God's people in areas such as housing, food security, employment training, mental health treatment, advocacy, and pastoral care. 33 chaplaincies in universities, hospitals, and communities. Grants for things like Embracing the Spirit, the Healing Fund, Justice and Reconciliation, and lots of Vision Fund projects. 20 ecumenical and social movement organizations. Seven theological schools and three education centers serving God's people by providing theological education continuing education and training for vocation of ministry and for lay leaders. 83 pastoral charges and 13 conferences serving God's people through worship, pastoral care, education, and mission. When you give to mission and service, you are also blessing to thousands and very likely millions of people around the world directly and through 92 global partners in 21 other countries, which change lives and save lives. So that's what we're going to, to work on this week for our Lenten practice, using what we have been given to be a blessing for someone else. Now we're going to have some fun this week. So here's what I want you to try. Jesus warns us not to be showy and draw attention to ourselves when we're generous and use what we have to bless someone else. So I want you to go into blessing stealth mode. Be creative. At least once a day this week, use something you have been given, something you've been blessed with to secretly bless someone else. Don't let them know that it was you. It could be a family member, it could be a co-worker. It could be a total stranger. It doesn't matter who. At least once a day this week, use something you've been given, something you've been blessed with, to secretly bless someone else. You know, even just a friendly word in a grocery line works. Then come back next week ready to share a brief story of how this Lenten practice worked for you and how it helped or didn't, how it helped open you up to God as you made space in your life to actively live out the way of Jesus. Amen.